So this is me from a couple days ago, or more precisely, you're watching this in the future, whatever. You know what I mean, I really future, time travel, woo. Anyway, this is coming out on Friday, I just want you all to have a fantastic weekend. I am going to try not work. Um, yeah, good, have fun, bye. I would just like to give a very big thank you to my tier 5 channel members and patrons. Bob the Dragon, Data Magnet, Cat Crab Lobster, Duck Machine, Try Again 95, Estrella the Dreamer, Mesic, Feudic Joel, German Chemist, and Casper Amholtz. Thank you again very much. On to the story. On to the dessert. On to the noms. The Care and Feeding of Humans, Part 6. While renowned for the strength, stamina, and survival rule of three, footnote one, humans can also be emotionally fragile. They take up their bonds very seriously. Once you have bonded with a human, you must take that bond seriously as well. Any attempt to betray that bond can result in serious consequences. Please see the history of the Clint and why they are not allowed to employ humans anymore. Footnote 1. An average human can survive for three minutes without air or in icy water. They can survive for three hours in the extreme environment, the Arctic and the Sahara wiki entries for Earth. They can survive for three days without water if they have shelter. They can survive three weeks without food if they have water. Dibiak, Review of Ontological Species Studies, The Care and Feeding of Humans. With great bonding comes great responsibility. Published by Glass and Steel, The Care and Feeding of Humans, Translation Engine 3.14159. Nerev hung around the humans while they worked out. The book had been very clear that humans needed supervision during their workouts, and she took a job very seriously. The fact that she got to watch them work out was purely a sight benefit. Alan was nothing if not dedicated. He spent all of his time on the surfboard and didn't seem to be dismayed at all when it would periodically dump him in the floor. He would yell, wipe out, and climbed back on. After the third or fourth time, he laughed maniacally before yelling, wipe out, and then proceeded to make strange noises. Nara wondered if he had suffered a debilitating brain injury after his fall, but neither Zoe nor Nate seemed to be perturbed by his noises. In fact, Nate joined in. Soon, Nareff realized that it was a song that had Alan and Nate were singing. Human songs were nothing like the songs of her people, and while she respected the restraint and tradition of her songs, something about the wild way that Nate and Alan were singing called to her. She wondered to join in, but wasn't sure she had the rhythm right. Zoe, she noticed, didn't join in on the song. Maybe it was a song that only men sang. Nareff doubted it since the book hadn't said anything about that, and so he seemed. While Nate and Alan were definitely enjoying themselves, Zoe had hopped up on the treadmill, pulled the goggles down over her eyes, and started running. An even, steady pace. But at a speed that made Nara think uncomfortably about human history of Apex Pursuit Predator. She wondered what scene set the playing for Zoe's goggles. Zoe seemed to be running as if she wanted to run to the end of the scene set. There was no light-heartedness. She didn't share with what she was seeing. She just ran. She ran until her body was covered in water. She ran until she was gasping for breath. And she kept on running. The pure intensity, the fierceness of it, made Nareff take a hesitant step back. Finally, she looked away and watched Nate. He'd given up on climbing Al Capitan, whatever that was. Nera promised herself to look it up later. He'd moved on to rowing the fake boat and was singing songs. Nera remembered the stories that she'd read about pirates and wondered if they were pirate songs. She made another mental note to ask him about the songs at breakfast. At no point did one of the humans say, Hold my beer. This phrase the book had warned her meant that the human involved was about to do something incredibly stupid and dangerous, even by human standards. All in all, she didn't really feel like they had needed her supervision. Once the humans were done exercising, they headed back to their quarters. Nerev wished them a good night and was pleased to see that all used the guidelines to get back to their quarters. She headed back to her own quarters and didn't realize until the door was closed behind her just how tense she had been. She slipped off her uniform and joined Quarif and Tariff in the rejuvenation pond. So, Quarif asked, where are the humans all you are hoping for? 
So much more, Arab said as she settled back into the vibrating water. The pulses of energy in the water danced over her skin like tinkling bubbles. Edgy sighed and closed her eyes, her feathers fluffing out in peaceful puff. After a minute, she opened her eyes and examined her nesters with a critical gaze. You are going to have to meet them at breakfast tomorrow, she said. I think your feathers are grown in enough that you don't need to spend all your time in the rejuvenation part anymore. Plus, you need bonding time with them. We need to be sure that they've bonded to us before we make landfall. Tariff put on one hand on his head and smoothed out his feathers. In all honesty, they still looked a little short and stiff. Post malt. Do, um, do you really think that we're ready? Tariff asked. I mean, my bloomage is totally ready, but Quariff, I'm not sure he's ready to go out in public yet. Quariff responded by splashing water at Tariff. Tariff splashed back with a bigger wave that sloshed water out over the pod and ran down the drain installed into the quarters of every Lindmead. Nerif smiled. Her nesters could be a handful, but they were good boys, and she was glad that all their mothers had agreed to share a nest. After they were done splashing, Tariff turned back to Nerif. Will we be able to tell which one is the damaged one at breakfast tomorrow? Nerif closed her eyes again and smiled. You tell me. After breakfast. End of chapter. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed.